Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the new updated business process flow editor that ships as part of Dynamics 365. Uh, first and foremost, if you can't tell, I've got a little bit of a cold that I'm battling on this video, so hopefully it won't be too distracting. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the new business process flow editor. So obviously this was a big change. Everybody was really excited about kind of the updated visual drag and drop editor. And now what's kind of cool about it is not only is it something that's available to you from a business process flow perspective, but it's also available to you from a business rule perspective. Perspective. So when you go in and create business rules, you'll see pretty much the exact same designer with the exact same type of components and, and, and functionality. Now there's a couple of additional things that are available obviously inside the business process flow that aren't necessarily available inside the business rule editor, but we can go ahead and show you, you know, some of that in, in another video as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the actual business process flow editor looks like inside the app. So let's hop into Dynamics 365 and take a look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and just navigate over into settings and processes, just like you normally would. And let's just, for time purposes, let's just open up kind of an existing process so you can see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this traditional lead to opportunity kind of sales process. So here's your new designer. So you'll see that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not all that different. I mean, obviously, visually, it's very different. But conceptually the business process flows haven't changed all that much so if you look up at the top you know we're still going to have the concept of security roles basically allowing you to enable security roles based upon business process flows so you can still go ahead and say okay this will be the default business process flow for you based upon your security role i can still change the order i mean i still have you know those types of different situations what's mainly different is i'm now going to have more of a drag and drop interface in regards to how i'm going to transfer the information over so you can see that if I go over into my components section, I still have the same concepts. I still have stages, I still have conditions, I still have steps, and they all mean the same thing that they've always meant in the past. So you know, a stage is still you know kind of a milestone area that you're looking at. Steps are still associated with Dynamics 365 uh, fields within the application, and then conditions are still going to branch things off into different areas. So if I were to go ahead and look at like for example this this qualify lead option, and I click on this. I can now see that it'll bring me over and show me the properties. And so in the properties for each individual stage, you can now see the, the items that are associated with it. So I can this is where I could define you know, the display name within this. If I wanted to use categories for reporting purposes, I could do that. This is where I can still associate the specific entity with this item that I want to work with. As I make individual changes to this, I could just hit apply, and then those changes will be basically subsequently put over into the area that I'm working with. Now, if I go into details, this will show me some of the existing things that are associated with it. So I can see the individualized steps that are attached with each one of these options. So by step one, existing contact, I also have the ability to move these steps up and down. So within the visual designer standpoint itself, I can move these items up and down. And as I move these items up and down, you can see that it'll automatically adjust the sequence in the actual properties window as I'm going through and committing this information. If I want to add a specific step or a component to this, I can come over into the composition area. I can just drag this over and now you'll see that I have kind of plus signs. And so this will allow me to position this exactly where I want to position this either above or below a specific step. So now I can position this here. It pops it right in believe that particular area. Now I can go ahead and you know apply and make my changes to it. If I want to remove this step, I can come over into here and then I can delete this step and that'll remove this item from the area that we were going through. And then if I expand it, I can still see individual scenarios. Now you also have your mini map. This mini map shows you kind of just in the grand scheme of things where you're at. So here's your stages and your items that are flowing through these individual processes. If I come up into here, I can also add kind of zoom in, zoom out as I want to, depending upon the length of the, the business process flow that I'm going through. So, you know, structurally standpoint, they haven't changed all that much. They're just presented a little bit differently from, from within the application. Now, if I want to add a stage, it's the same as if I were to add a step. I would drag that stage and then I could position that stage anywhere I want, before or after an existing stage. I click on that option for that stage. Now it associates that with a specific item. 
when I go into my properties, I can call this, you know, whatever I want to call it. I can select what entity I want to associate this with. Just like in the past, I don't necessarily have to have a relationship between these individualized entities to make this process work. Obviously, a relationship adds another dimension to it, but I wouldn't have to have that. And then I could start adding my individualized steps from there if I wanted to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just remove this stage. Now, We've oh. talked about in the past, you've always had the abilities to do conditions. Conditions still work when you think of them in the scope of business process flows. I can now take a condition. I can place that condition after a specific item that I want to look at. So I can look in this situation and say, okay, if this condition equals what, and then what do I want to do from, from this different situation? So here's where you can now go in and start specifying your specific conditions based upon those items. So now you can select you know, what that condition is. You can select what specific field you want to look at, what the operator is, what the value is, and then define what that situation is from here. So this is where I now have the ability to determine what's happening within the context of those individual situations. So here's where I can come into if customer need equals a certain situation, then I want to move off into that particular condition. Or if something that is in a specific field moves into an option, I can move in. So it's the same type of conditions that we have done in the past. Again, if I want to remove a specific item, I can select that item, hit delete, and then remove that condition from that item as well. Now, one of the cool things that they've actually done with this now is this concept of workflows. So you'll actually see for each individual stage now that you can actually go in and associate workflows. Now, there's two ways workflows can be associated. They can be associated with a specific stage, or they can be kind of globally associated with the workflow, which means they would be available throughout different contexts of the workflow as people are moving forward. So from a workflow perspective, I can drag this workflow into any one of these individual options. And this is where I can now start adding a workflow to this particular stage. Now, a couple of things you'll notice with the workflows is they can be associated with when you're coming into a stage or when you're exiting a stage. They can't necessarily be, you know, in the generalized mix of it where people are entering information in. So you can either come into a stage or, or, or when you're exiting a stage. The biggest thing to remember with your workflows is your workflows have to be on-demand workflows. So you cannot take a workflow that is available to we work with, you know, from, from an automatic perspective. They have to basically be on-demand workflows and they have to be associated with, as it says here, the same entity that is associated with this stage. So if they're not associated with the same entity, they won't work. But now if you think about what we've tried to do in the past with these individual situations, now you have just much more flexibility and, and granularity as you're moving forward. So this is kind of the new updated mechanism that you would see from a business process flow standpoint. Now, let, real quick, um, we mentioned the task flows. Let's just go ahead and create a task flow here real quick. And I just want to mention kind of a couple of key points on that as well. So give me one sec here. Now remember, uh, mobile task flows are you know mobile only. The big thing that you'll see with mobile task flows, again, the, the editor is very similar. You'll still have your, K, your pages and your conditions. You just don't necessarily have the, the, the workflows that are available to them. And then you have more kind of fields and labels and sections. So you can create different sections. Because remember from a mobile task flow, you might be updating a different entity or multiple related entities based upon what you've done from a specific activity. So this has all the different section labels and multiple items that you would be looking at from a mobile task flow standpoint. And then the other one, and we won't necessarily bring that in at this point, but the other one would be business rules. Business rules use the same editor as well when you're moving forward. And then they've added a couple of additional options under business rules as well. So that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed our look into the new updated business process flow editor as part of Dynamics 365. I would highly encourage you just to go out and play with it. There's some really cool stuff, obviously from a time frame perspective and trying to get everything in in, in 10 minutes. We, we didn't have an opportunity to really delve in and show you, you know, all the ins and outs. But I think if you have an opportunity to play with just even the basic concepts that we showed you in this video, I think you'll see there's just a lot of cool things and just new items that you can work with, particularly when you think about how processes work now with the ability to abandon processes and running you know concurrent processes and some of those items that are available so again i hope you enjoyed it for all of us here at crm tip of the day this has been derek saying thanks a lot for watching everybody take care and have a good one